and what that might uh, tell us. So first of all, let's look at the question of can we? Uh, and that is, how do we propel it? And let me say, these slides are just kind of considered an outline of the argument. Well, the first answer is, no, we can't. Um, and that is, uh, if you ask most scientists and engineers today, they would say, no, probably not going to happen. Uh, it's just te technically too hard, um, uh, too big, too costly, uh, and therefore probably not going to happen. Yes, we can imagine maybe getting around our solar system, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment, but moving across the vast interstellar distances, almost certainly not. And, you know, most scientists would say that. But a few are beginning to think about other possibilities. And so the second category that I have there is slow. And by slow, I mean less than the speed of light. Uh, and that is fairly slow, a few tens of thousands of miles an hour. Think Voyager. Uh, maybe a bit faster, a few hundreds of thousands of miles. We hour, we haven't gotten to that, but maybe even if you have something accelerating for a long time, maybe even a million miles an hour might get us there. But all that is still relatively slow compared to the speed of light, which is 186,000 miles a second, okay? So our, you know, our solar system is about something like 20 light hours across, okay? So it's, to go the whole solar system, you know, from one side to the other is maybe at the speed of light, roughly around 20 hours. Well, we're talking about four light years to the nearest star. So years versus hours. That's the kind of light, what light does for you. So almost everything below the speed of light is slow. Uh, then there's the outlandish possibility. FTL stands for faster than light. Uh, we'll even come to that possibility. So the various scientists who spoke at this conference actually laid out a number of different possibilities for answering these questions in some detail. So let's look at, first of all, why it is really so hard. Now, I said I worked on Apollo, and Jim uh, Benford is going to tell us why Apollo was wimpy. This is a, so a sobering slide because you don't see things to scale very much, but that's Daedalus, unmanned now referred to as uncrewed, the, uh, the, uh, and um, going to, uh, 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 compared to the Apollo, uh, which it was manned, of course, and it's absolutely enormous. The problems with starships, they don't scale well, and we're talking about scaling to very, very high speeds. They're, they're very large, they're very expensive, they're very inefficient in terms of payload. The, the uh, uh, Apollo uh, missions had about a 3% payload uh, fraction. That is, 97% of the, of, the, of, the, of the entire machine uh, was gone by the time uh, you got something on, on target. In fact, you saw uh, precisely that phenomenon in the video we saw earlier. You saw all those pieces of a Titan 3C launch vehicle falling away, then the upper stage boosters falling away, then the Voyager booster falling away, and then finally you had the actual Voyager that was left. And the problem is that these are chemical rockets, right? So chemical rockets use various forms of fuel, hydrazine or alcohol or kerosene or uh, hydrogen and oxygen, but basically it's a chemical reaction of some sort. Uh, and you are limited by the chemistry uh, of what's plausible there by way of con combustion. So you'd have to carry an enormous amount of fuel if you wanted to fly for any distance. So chemical rockets are not going to get us to the stars. They probably are not even going to get us to the planets, but they certainly are not going to get us to the stars. So what lies beyond that? Well. Today, we have a source of power on Earth, which generates an enormous amount of 